All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you all hear me loud and clear here? Making sure. Doing a little check mic. Awesome. Perfect. Hey, I see some familiar faces. How's it going, Joy? Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'd um, like to introduce you uh, to myself and my partner here, Ryan Orshell, and welcome you to our masterclass today on how to utilize SIFT pages within your organization. So again, my name is Tim, and I am one of the client success managers here at SIFT. And as you can see by my screenshot of my SIFT profile, a couple of things about me. Um, I'm really into fitness. Uh, Peloton is life for me. So if anyone else out there is uh, you know, big into the Peloton, look me up on the leaderboard. We can share, uh, share screen names and, and maybe get some rides in together. Um, outside of that, just in, enjoy spending time with my wife, reading, um, just all the fun stuff that uh, a thirty-year-old nine, a thirty-nine-year-old man who has the energy and mentality sometimes of a fourteen-year-old kid loves to do, including uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons with uh, with my buddies. So that's a little bit about me. I'll go ahead and pass it to Ryan and let him uh, introduce himself. Thanks, Tim. And uh, yeah, welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking the time today to join us on this masterclass. Hopefully, uh, you get some good value out of it. And uh, we're excited to present to you today. I, uh, um, I've been with the with SIFT for a little over two years, um, obviously, the other CSM. So uh, Tim and I usually partner up on all things uh, client side for SIFT. Um, so again, we're, we're happy to have you today. Awesome. So just to do a little bit of light housekeeping before we get, begin, uh, if you have any questions, please use, please use the chat feature within uh, the webinar and we'll get those questions answered for you. Um, we may answer them in real time. We may hold off until uh, we get to a point where we can answer those. We'll also do uh, some questions and answers at the end um, as well. And we'll have some poll questions throughout. Uh, also, after the meeting is over, we will be sending out a recording of it, uh, typically within about 36 hours once we get through all of the editing and post-production stuff to make it look presentable. So as far as our agenda goes today, we're going to give a quick overview of SIFT, just in case uh, we have folks on here who aren't too familiar with the application and the platform, um, explain what it's used for, how to use it, and then we're going to dive into what SIFT pages are and the ways that you can use them, and also some neat coming soon features for SIFT pages and uh, our redesign of our directory page. And then again, as I stated, as time permits, we will go ahead and do some Q&A at the end. So what is SIFT? SIFT is a tool that is used through organizations to allow you to look up resources, to find the best particular person for your, your needs for a particular uh, project or question that you may have. Uh, it's a living directory of all of your employees. It can house any bits of information you have from names, phone numbers, work history, interests, hobbies, you name it. If you have that attribute and that data in your system, we can populate it into your SIFT profile. When you log in, you're going to see your SIFT page, um, and at the top, there's the big search, we call it. Whatever you type in here, kind of treat it like Google. You can put in just keywords or individual bits of information, and you will get results for it. You can search someone's name, someone's job title, their location, um, you know, to see anybody that knows JavaScript, and you'll be able to pull back those results within the platform. And when you get those search results, you can actually filter them down even more to get a more granular result. So say you're looking for someone who knows Java and you get back 52 results, but you want to narrow it down to someone that's in your office and maybe is a lead for the team or has the specific other set of skills that you're looking for to achieve uh, the outcome of the project you're working on. You can filter it down to narrow your results to get a smaller group of people that you can then reach out to and see if they can assist you with what you're looking to do. From there, you do have access to everyone's profiles. And as stated, this is where you can come and learn about each individual person within your organization, what to reach out to them for, what do they consider a subject matter expert on, find out how to reach out to them via email, phone number. If you have a, a chat service integration, um, such as Teams or Slack, you can click on a button and immediately open up a message to directly reach out to them with any questions that they have. You can see, again, hobbies that they may have, interests, work, previous work experiences, languages they may speak, you know, even how to pronounce their name if, if you're going, going into a meeting with them for the first time and you want to make sure that you're pronouncing their name correctly. All that can live within here and we can 
change the layout however you feel fit to meet the needs that you're looking to achieve. The next main component of SIF is our org chart. This is where you can get a high level overview of where everyone sits within your organization and see who reports to who. What's really nice about this is you don't have to do much legwork on your end. All you have to do is have two bits of information that says this attribute on the employee side references this attribute for the manager, and it'll automatically build it out for you. You don't have to use Visio or any other design tools to build everything out. So it's pretty seamless and very quick to do. What's also really nice about our org chart is you can go through and add additional bits of information to the card content. So you can see their their job title, their location, stuff like that. You can do what's called the highlight by feature, which will color code each box to meet whatever information you're looking for. So if you're trying to do a highlight by office location, you can see everybody in blue is in Denver, everyone in, in orange is Detroit, everyone in green is Las Vegas, so on and so forth. And you can virtually have whatever attributes you want in there. Again, as long as the data is in the system, we can set up a highlight by for that. So you can see kind of a breakdown of where everyone falls within your organization. So that brings us to our first poll questions. So we got three of them here. Question on, number one is, does your organization have any formal or informal teams? Do you have multiple office locations? And do you do employee recognition? Give you guys a moment here to go through and answer those. And we'll see what the results are. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of you guys will be familiar with Tyco. That's what we use for our uh, demo data when we load up new sandboxes for uh, trials and, and prospects. All right. Whoop. There we go. So we got a, a good mix here. Um, the majority of the people here uh, have formal and informal teams within their organizations and multiple office locations. Um, and a lot of you uh, also do employee recognition, which is great. Um, good to see the answers and hear all that. Uh, and we will segue into the next section here, which is our SIFT pages. And uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Ryan. This is his bread and butter. This is what he he wakes up in the morning, just just thriving to jump into his SIF pages. If you think I'm joking, I'm not. I love the kid to death, and and this is just like the thing that he is most excited about. So I was like, I can't steal that thunder from you. I'll take the intro and give everybody an overview of of SIF, and I'm gonna let you run and pass the baton to you for the pages. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself and turn it over to Ryan. Wow, thank you, Tim. That was, uh, yeah, quite the introduction. Um, no, in all seriousness, uh, we are real passionate about this. Uh, well, I shouldn't say new feature anymore. It's It's been pretty much live for, for a year, but um, with the, a lot of work went into it and a lot of client feedback went into this. Uh, you know, we started seeing scenarios where clients were wondering, you know, where can we store information on a page instead of an individual? Uh, obviously, SIFT was originally created as a people directory for org chart, but where else can we store information? How can we link people? Uh, and one of the key factors in all of this was organizations with multiple office locations. So, you know, I want to be able to pull up an office location on one page and see the entire team, um, and not just on the org chart. I want to be able to, to um, you know, to have that or have a department uh, update page, uh, such as new hires, birthdays, anniversaries uh, for that particular month. So uh, a lot of this came uh, via uh, client feedback. And so we essentially created the SIFT pages. Now the dynamic pages, uh, again, is a great way to, and that's why we gave the poll question to give, uh, kind of get a sense of our audience and you know, what you currently have in your organization. And, you know, really the answer for SIP pages is all the above. Uh, right now we have clients using this uh, primarily for, um, you know, office location, groups, departments, uh, but we also have a good deal of clients that are now using uh, our dynamic page functionality for um, team events, um, certifications, awards, interest groups, community events, uh, anything you could really think of that you would want um, a landing page for your sifters to go there to get either get information or to find the people in uh, in regards to that particular group. 
So several different uses for, for pages right now. Um, creating pages for project teams. Uh, this one is a very popular feature right now. As you can see in the graphic, we have ways to tie members to each of these pages. So, you know, example being, uh, if you have particular projects or maybe your organization has teams of people that work for your customers, uh, this is a great way to either create that, that customer page or project page, initiative page to show uh, you know, who's involved. And of course that page is, is searchable via the big search, or I'll show you uh, when we give more of a live demonstration, the ability to link these members from their profile page to the actual team or project page as well. Uh, office locations, again, this was probably one of the very first uh, client feedback uh, that kind of uh, got, got the ball rolling for why we would want to develop um, the dynamic pages. So, you know, various office locations, or if you have a team that's overseas, how do we make them feel part of the organization? How do we make them feel connected within SIFT uh, and not so far away? So having a team page like this, uh, that's based on office location is uh, one of the very first ways that we, first reasons that we started to develop these pages. And it's again, a great way to tie your office location team members um, into those particular pages. Uh, and we also have some newer features where you would be able to pull up essentially a directory of those pages uh, and more to that, more on that to come. But um, again, another great way <clears throat> to use SIFT's uh, dynamic pages. Awards and recognition, certificates. Uh, this is uh, one that's becoming a lot more popular lately. Uh, I've been working with several of our clients to discuss different ways to really promote uh, not only SIFT, but the individuals within SIFT. Um, you know, it's always cool to have various badges and tags uh, on your individual page so you can show, you know, maybe you were in President's Club or maybe you uh, did some internal training and received a certificate that can help further your career within the organization or, or increase your, um, you know, your standing within your job title. So creating award pages or anything that could gain, gain uh, additional recognition, recognition for your users uh, and having those membership groups, uh, again, a popular example is some, you know, like I said, uh, you know, um, President's Club. So you get to see well, who are all the past members, who are the previous winners, who's part of this special club uh, within our organization. So it's a great way, again, to tie members to a page um, and being able to have the other uh, areas of your organization go to those pages for additional reference. And uh, these pages are all available within uh, your SIFT admin. So um, we'll be able to show you in a little bit, uh, essentially kind of how to walk through a very high level way of getting your pages started. But if you are a current owner admin within your SIFT page or your SIFT uh, site, uh, you have the full ability to go to your admin today and start working on these pages. Um, of course, we're happy to take questions after this to show you or schedule some time outside of uh, this webinar to show you exactly how to build these pages. Um, but we do have that capability right within the admin. Uh, so we'll be walking you through kind of a high level demo today um, just to kind of point you in the right direction for starters. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna switch over and have uh, Ryan share his to do more of a live demonstration of how to build out and configure these pages. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna answer a couple questions that came in through the Q&A here. So it uh, looks like Steve Mueller has two questions. Mueller, Mueller, I had to, I'm sorry. Um, has two questions here. So can we use, uh, can we sync this from an HRIS system? So yes, that's a great question. We have many different ways you can pull your data into the system. So if you're using an HRIS system that allows you to export the data out to a report, we can work with you to configure that report and then automatically ingest that into SIFT uh, on a regular basis. So you can have it come in once a day, once a week, once a month, or however you see fit, and it'll automatically update within our platform. So that way all you have to do is make sure it's up to date within your HRIS system and then we'll take it from there and load it into SIFT. And then your other question was being able to get an org chart view into a SIFT page. So 
Right now, you're not able to get the actual org chart view within there. You'll be able to see a list of your members. However, when you are looking at the org chart itself, you do the, have the ability to kind of, as I was showing, highlight by and do some filtering. And if you're looking for a specific department or team, you can do what's called a, a start here option, whereas on the bottom corner of the person's card that you want to be at the top, you can do start from here and it's going to build out and expand and show only that person and everybody underneath them as opposed to showing the entire organization. So hopefully that kind of answers that question here. Um, but I will go ahead and uh, pass it back over to Ryan. All right. Thank you, Tim. So when we start talking about building out these pages and the various uh, reasons that you would you would want a page or multiple pages within your SIFT instance, uh, there's two things that I like to point out from the very start, and there's two different kinds of pages that we have here. Uh, one being the attribute page and one being an independent page. So the key difference to this is really just, um, so the functionality is the same in terms of how it will interact within your SIF site, um, but two of them, they, they both have kind of uh, a slight different functionality. So I wanted to point that out to you. We have, uh, again, two options here where this is your um, independent page. So um, this is a page uh, that's, uh, as you can see, doesn't have members tied to it. Uh, this is more of an information related page. So again, uh, this is kind of a, a good one for HR department. If you have employee em important employee documentation that they could come to this page and download, or maybe if you use an intranet or some uh, other form of internal database that uh, we can link within these pages to your uh, internal sites, we can do that as well. So again, this, this is really a page where uh, sifters can come in, uh, get some information, maybe some updates. Uh, I've had other clients use this for uh, you know maybe new hires or upcoming birthdays for the month. Um, and so there's a little less interaction in terms of membership, but it, again, it, this is more for um, you know just static information where uh, your users can go for updates uh, or department updates. Um, and then of course the other page is the attribute page. Um, this page is uh, more interactive in the regard that you have members tied to these pages. And this is a live kind of full circle. I'll show you the functionality, but all these members that are tied to these page, pages uh, have the ability to click over. You can look at your membership tab here and you can see your current members. And I'll also show you a few different things in terms of how we can organize these. But I've got the ability to not only locate this particular team, go to the members tab, and I can click directly into any one of these individuals' uh, SIFT pages for quick access. And the same will work vice versa when we um, I show you the tagging feature in which if I was on someone's page and I didn't know these pages even existed, uh, you could quickly see where there's a section on their page uh, with a badge where I can click on that, uh, that badge and it will take me over to this page. So again, kind of a full circle, more interactive type of page. And when we talk about attribute, we're talking about um, the various data sets that we have that uh, are unique, ID unique identifiers to your clients. So, you know, job title, department. Um, we also have a way to automate all of this. So if you wanted to quickly loop a bunch of pages together and members together based on office location, you can go into your SIFT admin and choose that attribute. So you would choose office location for this uh, or department for this example. And it would automate any member that's tied to those same departments would automatically get looped into the membership of that page. So again, as an owner admin, that's gonna cut down on your time manually creating each individual page and then manually inviting every single member to the appropriate page. So there's a way to automate that. It's a very super cool feature. And especially if you have multiple departments and multiple office locations, you could create those within 10 to 15 minutes, have those pages completely up, up and running functional. So um, this page is obviously a little more popular um, than, our, than our independent page, simply because you have the interaction with your members um, and you're able to toggle between your actual members and the pages themselves. Both of course are, you know, you can search for both of them via the big search. Um, so that functionality all stays the same. 
Uh, you'll notice here too, obviously this is just for the sake of the webinar today, but we do have the full ability to customize the information in the sections within your dynamic pages, just as you do uh, with your individual profile pages. Uh, so the layout within the admin will look the same and we'll also dive into that in a few minutes um, to show you the uh, functionality there. Um, so we, before we get started on that, I just wanted to quickly show you kind of just how this all ties together once you have your pages built out and customized. Uh, you know, if I'm coming here for information, I want to see who this team leader is of this group. I can simply click over into their profile. It'll take me right over to their profile. And this is what I was mentioning before is having a section where you can have uh, this badge related to um, the various pages or groups that this person is tied to. Another thing to quickly note with the attribute pages is the ability to have multiple tags. Uh, so if you have an individual that is part of several different groups, you could have several different tags here. So it all kind of uh, is dependent on how you want to customize and who is part of those groups gets associated with those tags. So you can have multiple under, under each person. So again, I'm able to, to come here if I didn't know that page existed, and I was looking around for you know, additional information on this person, I can see, oh, they're part of this group and I can click into it. And again, it'll take me right over to that page and I can do the same with all the other members of the group. In terms of setting up these pages, uh, the uh, again, this is going to be within your admin under the pages tab. And right off the bat, it's going to ask you what page type you would like to proceed with. Again, you know, you, you'll note that it'll show you the key differences between which page, and you're also able to create multiple pages. So we have clients that have, you know, 10 different attribute pages, 10 different independent pages. It's really dependent on how, how many pages and what the functionality is that you want within your SIF site. So there's really no limits there that, that we've seen. So that's the, that's the really cool thing is that you could have multiple pages with different um, categories. Um, and again, building these out, you'll select the type of function that you want to start with, and then it will also take you over to this page. And for our fellow owners admins that are currently on the call, this might look pretty familiar to you. And it's basically the same kind of layout and function as we have the page layout under the person profiles tab. So this will give you a list of all your current pages. You're able to edit those, you can delete those. And one thing I like to note is as long as you haven't switched on the publish pages yet, uh, no other SIFT uh, user will see these pages until you publish them. Once you do publish them, they are live on your site. They're fully searchable, fully interactive. Um, moving along, not to get too far deep into the weeds here, but the, um, just very high level, like I said, you are able to customize your attributes within each page. So if there's additional sections you wanna add, a photo section, uh, additional links, uh, you have the ability to do so. Again, the layout configuration, if you wanna change maybe the order of some of the sections on these pages, you can move those around by doing that within the admin. And the most important thing is the uh, general settings of these pages. So you're able to see, um, again, who is part of the, um, who's part of the membership. Um, you can either do that through the page or this membership and general settings tab. Um, you'll notice here when we showed you this example, these members, how do these members get on here and how do you get those roles assigned? And you can do that all within the admin. You can group members by this one for our example, it's just by role. But if you had various levels or titles of that group with like um, group leader, admin, uh, you're able to put all of that in here. And then of course, uh, grant specific access. So if you don't want uh, your other fellow sifters to join a page without any consent, um, you know you have the full ability to, to essentially control who gets into the page, who becomes a member, uh, if they have to ask the admin for that particular page. And the cool thing is it doesn't always have to be owner admin. It can be someone else that maybe you want to have in charge of that page. And they would have the ability to come in and allow other members or remove members as they see fit as the admin.
And again, the way for that to for us to automate that, if you have multiple locations, would be to again, you um, it will ask you if you want an attribute page. Uh, once you select the attribute page, you can either uh, move forward with just at another time, worry about the tags and just create the pages beforehand before adding members, or you can assign members by an attribute right off the bat, and that will pre-populate your pages. So the good thing is, is you do have flexibility to go back at any time and add those tags to a member's page um, without having to publish it. You could, you know, you could pre pre-build all of these pages before members get added to them or see or have the ability to get to these pages. All right, perfect. So we did have a couple questions come in uh, regarding uh, pages. So we just re read those off real quick. So Jessica Reeves had asked, um, in general, do we have customers using SIFT as a company-wide intranet? So um, short answer to that is we do have the ability to embed a widget on your internal uh, intranet page that allows you to search from there. So that's one option. But we do have a lot of customers that We'll just, you know, instruct their users to set SIFT as their main homepage so that when they log into Chrome or Firefox or whatever browser that they're using, that that pulls up there. Um, but it's just a combination of how you want to use it internally. Um, and then Joy had asked, is there a limit to the number of pages a company can have or create? And the, the answer is no. You could... The, you could have as many as you want, theoretically. Um, you you would just have to build them all out and uh, make sure you're, you know, either having them build out by attributes or assigning, uh, you know, people to oversee the pages as uh, Ryan was explaining during his uh, demonstration here. And then Graham had asked, is there, is the owner admin a full admin of the overall SIFT instance or just the SIFT pages? So owner admin has access to everything within SIF. So they have access to the back end panel. They have the ability to uh, add uh, pages. They have the ability to change configurations, your theming, your colors, all that stuff within your SIFT account. And then last, uh, Mary Kay had asked if there is an update uh, for being able to search uh, the pages within SIFT based on attributes. So all locations with X att attributes. So, um, yep. So we're we're going to show something new in the coming soon section here towards the end. But one of the things that I showed when you uh, do a search on something. So if you wanted to look for a particular skill, you know, someone who has JavaScript, you can do a search for Java. And then in that filter, filter down by location so you can see everybody that has that particular skill set in an office location to be able to see, you know, who all, um, you know, has that that skill based off of the additional attributes that you want to filter by. So hopefully that answers those questions and I will pass it back over to Ryan. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, that, that essentially concludes our demonstration of the dynamic pages. Um, so I believe we're at the part now where we can continue to open up uh, via Q&A. Yep, if you wanna go ahead, I will take over uh, screen share and go into the next set of poll questions. All right, perfect. This is why we work so well together, Ryan. We're like yin and yang. <laughs> All right. So our next poll question is, what are you most excited to use SIFT pages for? Is it for informal or formal teams, office locations, awards, or something else? And if it's something else, let us know in the chat. I personally, had all of the above, I mean, uh, they're all so many great uses for it. And, and, you know, the sky's the limit with your imagination, especially being able to use the independent pages feature. You know, if you wanted to create just a page for an upcoming event, you know, like going to a baseball game or, you know, a company party or a fundraiser or something like that, you can create them for that. So it's it's just a, a really neat tool and feature to be able to have. All right, so it looks like the bulk of you are most excited to use them for your informal and formal teams, followed by something else and then awards and then office locations. So um, let's see. Yeah, so cert certifications, designations, areas of expertise, that was one of the things for uh, 
something else that uh, Sean had mentioned in chat. Um, those are great. Uh, Yep, and then Steve, that's a uh, good good feedback. He said SIF pages feel more like SIF views, where you can have pages that conjure up like uh, internet or wiki concepts. So, yep. All right, our next poll question uh, would be: Are you an admin of your SIFs, uh, your organization's SIF instance? Yeah, resumes, that's a that's another good one, Joy meant uh put on there to be able to have a place where you can maybe have a page that's dedicated to maybe potential new hire resumes so you could all maybe access them uh for review. So yeah, it's definitely something that you could potentially do. Um, but we have a a, a, a decent uh three-quarter split here of the majority of you are uh admins. Um, and then we have a handful here that are uh just regular old sift users. All right, so as we said, we do have some, some neat features on the horizon uh, coming up within the next quarter. We don't have a definitive date locked down, but it will be sometime within Q2 of this year where we're doing a redesign of this directory page. So when you do a search for anything within there, you'll now have the ability to find pages within your search results and your directory page. So You'll see down the left hand side here, you can filter down by, you know, team members, groups, awards, pages, like whatever pages that you may have created in here, you can have them show here. So that kind of goes back and, and maybe answers uh, Mary Kay's uh, original question about being able to do like a filter on a page based off an attribute. So having this new uh, view and, and way of being able to display the directory results uh, could definitely utilize um, and achieve that functionality that you were. Uh, relating to so but again yeah this is this is pretty much how it's going to look um and we will make sure that we send out an announcement once that does go live but we're very close to kind of you know crossing the t's and dotting the i's and making sure everything looks good and uh is bug free before we start to roll it out so again sometime within this upcoming quarter of uh of 2023 we should be seeing this this new feature uh rolling out With that being said, that kind of brings us to the end of our, our main presentation. So we do have a little bit of time left over um, to, to go through any additional questions and answers that people might have. So feel free to uh, throw them in the chat or use the Q&A uh, feature here. Um, looks like we do have a couple more. Um, So he, Steve had asked if you can delegate page administration to others. Um, yes, that's something where, as Ryan was showing you, you can you can have essentially like a moderator of a page that would kind of oversee everything to allow them to invite people or accept requests so that, as he had said, not everyone can just jump into every page they want to. They can request to join it, and then whoever is kind of leading that page um, has the ability to authorize them in and also has the ability to... Uh, modify the information within the page, the descriptions and additional links and so on and so forth. Um, and then Graham had said, thanks for the answer, wanted to, uh, but I was asking is, can a certain admin for the page be delegated to someone who isn't an owner slash admin? Yes, so you don't have to be an owner or admin of SIF to be able to be added as uh, an admin of, of the page itself. Um, so you, you can ass definitely assign that out to, you know, whoever you want in a particular department or a team to kind of designate and, and be the, the point person for that. Yeah, and as to mention, there, the ability to do that is in the general settings section when you're building out your page. And you can assign multiple admins uh, or there's in the event that you want everyone to be able to contribute to a page, you could literally turn the editing function open to all members of that page. So if it's something that you're collaborating on, um, you have full control as the admin of that page to basically kind of delegate who can edit what, who can contribute what on the page or all. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Steve had asked, 
you know, where as a place that he can submit product feedback that doesn't feel like it's being thrown down a black hole. I, I love that. Uh, oftentimes with some companies, you'll see, you know, hey, great, great, great feedback suggestion. We'll pass it along to our developers. And nine times out of 10, they don't. We we take every bit of feedback that is presented to us, um, you know, very, uh, you know, to heart. And we make sure we are letting our development team know that. So if you ever have any ideas for, you know, functionality or enhancement requests, you can always shoot us an email and um, I'll give you that email address here. It's down at the bottom there that contact us at support at justif.com. You can send that to us. That's going to come directly to Ryan and myself, and then we can uh, present it and open up a ticket on our end with our development team to let them know, hey, we've got this client that's interested in this feature. And if it's a great idea, you know, we'll implement it. Or if we get a lot of people that are requesting uh, a particular feature, then, you know, that'll uh, definitely bump it up in the priority list. But any feedback is always appreciated, uh, whether you think it's just a small request or, or a major lift or anything like that. You know, we, we welcome it all. Um, and then William was asking, how do I know what my role is and, and if I was approved? Well, if you are an admin, you're going to see on the... SIFT page uh, next to your name, there's going to be an icon that looks like a little person with a gear over it. And when you hover it, that says admin dashboard. If you are an admin, you do have the ability to click on that and it'll take you into the admin dashboard. Um, if someone were to add you as an admin, uh, you would get an email saying, hey, you've been invited to be an admin and you'll click on the link to accept that role. And then you would have access to get in there. Um, if you don't see that option, then you're just a standard user uh, for the time being. But um, that would be how you would know that. And then as far as, uh, let's see, when creating an attribute page, this is from Paul, pulling attributes from Azure AD, for example, the page con count says it stays at zero. Pages are being created. Message displays on all pages. Anything we are doing wrong there? I know this might be a question for offline chat. I'll let, I'll let Ryan answer that one for you here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, depending on the size of the pages, we have seen where it will it might take a couple of minutes to load up the page because if you're automating that attribute, um, you're telling the site to go and basically look for everyone with those matching attributes and put them onto a page. So we can certainly uh, schedule some time with you after this call to double check and make sure everything is, is going according to plan. But um, it sounds like you're off to the right start with um, having that attribute from uh, your Azure AD populating those member pages. So we can take a closer look for you. And then uh, we have a question, another one from Steve. I uh, love all the questions, Steve. Keep, keep them coming. Um, he said, if stiffed page data is out of date or considered stale, is there a feedback, comment, or social side of pages where people can comment, you know, similar to how Stack Overflow has it? So I would say the 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 easiest and best way to do that is as Ryan was showing you can create and and have different sections of your pages and one of them can be you know external links you could have a link that would just basically open up uh you know it could be a mail to link that opens up an email to a specific person where they could you know then shoot an email saying hey notice that this is out of date or this is may need to be updated or there's a spelling error here or something along those lines um so that might be one way you could go about doing that um to be able to provide like feedback uh, outside of just pinging directly who the the main person is that's that's running that particular page directly and just saying hey notice this needs to be updated or changed so i guess either of those would be um your your easiest and best ways of, of going about and submitting feedback on a particular page yeah we do have a way to uh delegate uh who's contacted in within support so in the SIFT admin we have the ability to put um, if you do have like, a, you know, feedback or anyone has an issue or needs uh, support, uh, we have clients that have our support line in there, uh, support at justif.com. But also if you have a, a team uh, that's responsible for updating that information on your side, you do have a way to add that contact email within the admin so that when they do go down to the bottom of their page and click on uh, support, it will actually go to your email box as well. Or you could have multiple email boxes set up on the back end to uh, receive any feedback. And then it looks like we had a question come through the chat from Jennifer. She said uh, she wanted to know if we do dotted line reporting and if that's currently possible, is there a way to do future planning and different directories? that only the planners and HR and admins can see? That's a really great question. We actually um, just had our uh, 
UI UX designer submit internal uh, um, survey uh, to us all here earlier in the week to gauge, you know, feedback on what we've received from our clients. And a lot of people are requesting, you know, dotted line reporting and having that future planning. And so we do have those on our radar to potentially um, develop here in a future release. So currently there isn't a, a true way of doing that dotted line reporting um, or doing like a, a future planning outside of, you know, one, one thing we've seen people do is you can export out your org chart um, into a, a scalable vector file, so an SVG, and you can then go through and kind of modify and play around with it there if you wanted to kind of play around with, uh, you know, seating chart and or, um, you know, roles and opening up new roles and things like that. So, um, you know, we we are taking that uh, those two particular feature requests uh, very uh, serious and, and are looking to potentially implement them here in a future release. So if it if it does end up coming down the pipeline, we will be sure to email and let everybody know. And Jennifer, I can uh, I'll email you after this webinar, and I can show you some things in terms of how to man manipulate the org chart as well. So we can set up some time. Yep. Um, so we have a question that says, if your company has one official office location, but all of your employees are remote, would each employee in different states be considered an office? Basically, other virtual employees want to know where others live. Um, you you could have you could have multiple attributes within your profile, you could have like, you know, uh, an office location, which, you know, you could just have it to be your main office, or you could have it just be called remote, you could have it be where it's a free form field where they can type in, you know, their exact city and state, uh, so that they could uh, build off of that. But if you wanted to have like for, for pages purposes, you know, a page for everybody that's remote, you would have like an attribute that you know, just as designated to, you know, yes or no remote employee type of deal. And then it would build off of that automatically. So hopefully that kind of answers that question there. And um, just real quick um, to clarify, we also have a feature that's built for um, the actual profile pages of users where you can set your schedule. So not only can you set your time zone, uh, if you're, you know, kind of scattered throughout the, the country or multiple countries, you can set your time zone. And you can also set your your work schedule and and where you are uh, through a drop down menu. So if you want to set yourself as remote uh, for any particular days or hybrid, now that hybrid uh, work schedules are more prominent, uh, you do have the ability to control that on your SIFT user page. Let's see. And then Steve asked um, kind of a similar question: Can you hide users in an org chart until they're officially onboarded? So the depending on how they're coming your data is coming in. So if you're using like Active Directory, once they're added in Active Directory, Act, Active Directory will check once an hour to see if there's any changes, whether there's people been removed, added, or changed, and it'll automatically populate them in. Um, so if you have them in Active Directory, they would automatically pull over and update into the system. If you're managing everything via CSV file, you could hold off and putting them in into your CSV file until they're officially you know, hit their start date um, to be able to do that. Um, but that's, unless Brian can think of another way to kind of like hide users that, you know, are officially in new employees, but maybe not hit their start date yet from showing on the org chart. Um, that would kind of be the the two ways that I would go about it. Yeah, and, and Tim is correct. Uh, we do have the ability to interact with the org chart as a live function where you can exclude uh, certain people from your view. Um, but when the view is reset, you know, those 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 uh, members are still technically visible and uh, viewable to the rest of the to your SIP site. Let's see here. Joy had asked in regards to like sandboxes, if we have an option for sandboxes for future planning. Um, So to answer that, it's not like a like an official like sandbox like test side to SIFT. I mean, we internally have our our test sides that we use for you know when we're building out uh, enhancements to test them in before we push them to the live production side of things. But as far as like doing that sandbox for future planning, again, that's the kind of stems off of the uh, question that came in from I think it was 
Jennifer in regards to being able to do future planning and, and dotted line reporting. Um, it is something that we've had people bring up and say they would love to see. And, you know, we do have it on our radar as, as possible features to implement down the road uh, to be able to do stuff like that. And let's see. And then Jennifer said, is there a way to auto-generate a PDF for sharing of the full org chart that will separate into pages for easy reading? So to auto-generate it, um, within SIF, there's not an option to do that right now. You actually have to go through and on the org chart page, uh, click the download button to generate uh, and download a copy of it. Um, you can download the entire org chart or you can filter it down like I was mentioning earlier by you know specific teams, departments, so on and so forth. And and share it out that way um, for easier access to it. And then Paul had said, we created a SIFT user security group. This is the only group that we sync. Easy way to control who is shown in SIFT that way. So yeah, that's that's definitely one way of going about uh, doing that is to have you know separate security groups. So if you're utilizing Active Directory, when you go through and and set up that connection, it gives you the ability to choose which groups you want to pull in from Active Directory to be a part of your organization chart. So that would be a great way to you know you could have a holding group to where there are new employees, but they haven't officially started. They could be in there, and then you would move them over to the other group that would then sync into the system once they actually hit a start date and then they would populate. So that's a very, I love learning. That's, that's the one, one thing I love about this, this job and just technology in general, you're always learning something every day and you can bounce ideas. Like I would have never thought about doing that until Paul mentioned doing that. And I think that's a great way of handling that situation is just having like a separate group um, to kind of house those people. So, so kudos to you, you know, typically you know, we'll say you, those are mainly utilized for separating, you know, people in active directory will sometimes use their, you know, quote unquote seats for off uh, like uh, meeting rooms and printers and fax machines. And you don't want those to show up in, in your organization chart. So they'll be a part of a different group and you're only going to be loading in like your global users or users of a specific office or um, stuff like that. So that's definitely a, a great way to, to get around doing that. So thanks Paul for that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, when he said it works great for offboarding as well. So yeah, so if you are transitioning someone outside of the company, you can still keep their account active in the system, but remove them from the org chart. So that way you still have all their stuff in there for you know payroll and other you know HR logistics and so forth, but they're not necessarily going to be on the, the org chart or a part of the directory. Uh, Steve had said, we can hide the GAL. Um, in exchange, uh, need that feature here solves the onboarding problem as well as the walled garden people who are sensitive that you don't want to show. So, yeah, so you know, I would I would kind of use Paul's uh, uh, idea here in 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 the uh, way of of having a separate group for those particular people, so that way that they're kind of. You know, they're they're in the house, but they're not in the room, so to speak. So that way they're kind of separated off and um, without actually showing and populating. Yeah, I think a good example is we have clients that have, you know, either um, contracted employees or frontline workers that, you know, for organizational purposes, you want them in SIFT. Uh, but maybe they, for one reason or another, don't need actual access into SIFT. Um, so we do have those scenarios where we have, you know, various directories and various groups that live within SIFT and you are able to control uh, essentially the access without having, you know, people come in that shouldn't necessarily have access to SIFT. Yep. And then I did see a note here, uh, Laura, who is uh, the face behind our, our LinkedIn post. So she's our marketing guru here, did say that improved export options are on the horizon and in the roadmap for uh, future release. So it is something we are going to be implementing. So um, that should be something that once we do start to roll it out, we will let you all know uh, when to kind of expect that and go from there. Although I do take credit for a couple of of the posts, uh, just, just I, mean, I'm, I have a, a bit of a nerdy imagination and, and, and come up with them. We like to, we like to collaborate here. Every, everyone uh, has equal say uh, within aspects of the company, so it's great. All right, so I think that 
does it. We don't see any more any additional questions coming through. Um, we've got about five minutes left on the on the clock for for this, so we can always end things early unless there's an, any additional last minute questions that pop up. But feel free, you know, you know, I'm the type of person where I, questions always come to me after the fact. So. Uh, we have that support at justsif.com email address again, uh, as, as shown on the screen here. You can reach out to if you have any additional questions that, that will come to both Ryan and I, and one of us will get back to here um, by the end of the day or you know tomorrow morning sometime with, uh, with an answer to any additional questions that you might have. Uh, and then as stated at the beginning, we will have a recording of this. Uh, we should have it out within the next 36 hours. So I'd say by Monday or maybe Tuesday uh, at the latest of next week, we should have that available and we will email it out to you if you signed up to uh, be a part of this presentation. So thanks everybody. We really appreciate you uh, joining us today. We will be doing another one of these uh, in the near future. We're trying to do one a quarter. Um, so uh, I would say the next one's probably going to come within the next couple of months. So if you have any ideas, uh, hey, we would love to, to learn more about this or that. Again, you can use that support email address and shoot us a message and let us know you'd like to have a dedicated class on a specific thing, and we'll go ahead and uh, put something together and, and present it. So uh, with that said, if there's anything else, Ryan, you want to add? No, just to reiterate, please feel free to, you know, if we're, we're already working with you individually, please let us know how we can help. If you'd like to set up some time to walk through the pages within your SIFT instance, just get a hold of us uh, or, you know, please feel free to use the support at justsip.com and uh, we can always set up a, a meeting down the road to, uh, to again, go through the SIP functionality as well as pages. All right, well, everybody have a great day. And again, if you need anything, we're always here to help. So feel free to reach out.